Welcome back guys. We are taking a special look today at a product from Yankee Hill Machine Company. We are looking at the YHM R9 or the Resonator 9 millimeter suppressor. Now what this suppressor is, is a dedicated 9 mil subgun can that is relatively tiny but it's made out of some really hardy materials and as such you're able to use it on kind of a plethora Yes, a plethora of guns. In fact, what I will recommend this suppressor as is more of a universal suppressor than anything else. Uh, you know, I've got a big arsenal up here that we're gonna talk about, but one of the things that people ask me quite often is what makes a good first suppressor? What makes a good second suppressor? What suppressor do you recommend for whatever the application is? And it's such a loaded question because suppressor use by and large is very specialized. When I got into suppressors, I started with Form 1 cans, which if you look at my 300 Blackout build, this is actually a Form 1 can that I purpose built for that gun. It's stacked in a certain way. It has a certain design for the baffle shape. Everything is catered for subsonic ammunition, short barrel action, 300 Blackout, everything. So that's purpose built. When I look at this big boy that everyone makes fun of because it's ribbed for your ears pleasure, this is the AB Raptor 762 stack. And this is perhaps my favorite can. But again, with a caveat of its purpose built. This is my favorite can when it comes to bolt guns. In fact, this 308 bolt gun is extremely quiet. This is my main go to for hunting with this can because of such. Now, in the contrast of that, when we look at the AB Raptor, that's fine, when we look at the AB Raptor on something like this M4 build, that's more of the retro style that people kind of gawk at. But we've got the big, big boy reflex on here with a six inch reflex, six stack, which was the optimum for 5.56. This is only gonna shoot 5.56. This is only gonna probably ever exist on this gun and one other. So again, I don't get a lot of value from this very expensive can because it's so purpose built. But when we look at the YHM R9, we're gonna find that the value factor is extremely high for a can that with you know, your SOT fees or your transfer fees with your tax stamp and everything else, you can get this for just under 600 bucks. Now that's a lot of value. So let's see how it performs across this magnitude of weaponry. So being that it is a nine millimeter dedicated suppressor, where it's going to excel at is in fact nine millimeter. One of the best things about it, we can go ahead and purchase a booster piston adapter, the piston to be able to fit onto a half by 28 threaded barrel and we're good to go. Now it doesn't include it, it only includes the direct thread, so you need to compensate for that when you think about your cost. Now when you buy a hybrid can that's dedicated hybrid, you're gonna get a lot of that with it, right? You'll get a booster housing for your piston, you're gonna get uh, potentially a tri-lug, you're gonna get two different sizes for your direct threads. There's lots of things that happen, but for the case of this, the YHM only comes with a half by 28 direct thread, which is good for like PCCs, which we're gonna get to next. But let's see how it sounds on a dedicated pistol. This is the Walther. PPQ and my holster for the day is the Hush holsters, which we're gonna get a good review on them coming soon. This is just to kind of touch on it to let you see it is working, it is functional. We are using it today with our TLR1 light. The VIR2, it's got some issues, so we'll cover that in a future review, so stay tuned. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is see how she sounds, make it hot. Today's ammo of choice is, I believe, Syntec, 150 grain from uh, American Eagle, so. Let's see how we do. Right off the bat, get a little jam. Okay. Have a magazine in backwards. So when you run a suppressor, everything is a little bit different. Your actual way your gun is recoiling is gonna be different. The recoil spring inside the gun is gonna behave a little bit differently, which is why we didn't get last round holdback. It's why we see jams on this one. It is not really tuned well, and that's really hot. It is not really tuned well to run suppress. This is just something that I carry around for fun. This is not my defensive setup, just so we know. Now, let's take a look at what it does with a subgun because the YHM with no barrel restrictions on nine millimeter is full auto rated. So let's pull out the MP5 and see how it does. All right, guys, we are now with the MP5. This is a rebranded HK from an import. Uh, technically it's post sample, but it is a fully automatic. So we are going to test just how the YHM is rated for full auto. It's still pretty warm, uh, but just to kind of show you, 
We did go ahead and change out to the tri-lug adapter. Again, that is gonna be an optional accessory that you have to buy. Highly recommend if you have that capability. So let's go ahead and see if it runs. We're gonna start in semi, just to make sure we got no issues with function. Man. All right, now that it's running, allegedly, we'll go ahead and do a full mag or finish it out and see how it sounds. So again, this is subgun rated. There is no limit when it comes to barrel length for nine millimeter. There's no limit when it comes to rate of fire for nine millimeter. If we really wanted to, we'd get this thing cherry hot, keep dumping, 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 but we've got a lot of different things that we're about to try. So even though we're pretty hot right now, we're gonna keep the ball rolling. Let's go ahead and start looking at the other caliber ratings in which it is rated for that you may not know you can do. Guys, and one of the cool things about the YHM R9 is that it has the suppressor standard threading, which is 1.375 by 24 TPI. And what we're talking about here is what you actually use for your direct thread into this can. So what that means is that if you have a particular mounting hardware, that's a QD that you like. In my instance, I started off very heavily with Griffin Plan A. Uh, it's just, those were where I started. So in order to keep that going, all I had to do was add a Griffin Plan A Excel adapter to my YHM can, and I can go ahead and throw it on my other guns. Now, do be warned, there was some criticism behind YHM that if you get a baffle strike and you're using a third party, i.e. not a YHM adapter on your gun, they may not cover the damage because they're not liable for what you do when you convert it. So maybe the device is not good, maybe the can's not good, the problem is they're not gonna be able to test that efficiently. So what we have here is we're stepping up to 30 cal. This is a 300 blackout full 16 inch. Not too difficult, right? This is your standard subsonic 220 grain ammunition. Not a lot of uh, pressure, not a lot of issue with heat. Many suppressors that are out there for nine millimeter 45 are actually rated for subsonic 300 blackout. So I expect this to do well. In fact, I already know how it sounds. We're gonna go ahead and again, we're going into an ID target right in front of me. So we're just gonna see how it sounds and let you guys be the verdict. First one's always a little bit louder. Man, I physically can see holes in the ID target now. All right, but not too bad. That's 100% hearing safe but let's see how it does with supers out of a 16 because obviously that's the next step. So let's change. All right, so we're back with the Ruger American Ranch. Forgot to introduce the gun, 300 blackout, 16 inch barrel. Now we're gonna go ahead and shoot some AAC supers. These are 110 grain. Just gonna go down range, see how they go. And last one. And that was 300? That was green light flashing at me. That was 270. 270, okay. 270 yards with supers, not too bad considering this is zeroed at 100 and I was just kind of messing around to see if I could hit it. Pretty cool. Now, let's go to the next one. All right guys, now I did want to do a little comparison. So we're still sticking with the bolt gun philosophy. Again, bolt guns give the best hearing accuracy for how a suppressor really sounds, especially because we've got no gas coming back. Everything's going out of the barrel. Everything's going through the suppressor. We're getting max effectiveness of a suppressor. This is a very high-end suppressor, very expensive, and of course, it is uh, designed specifically for this gun, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and see how it sounds. We're just gonna let one fly down range. Maybe we'll connect to something, but probably not. Yeah, just to the right of it. So that's how that sounds. Let's go ahead and change out to the YHM and give it another try. All right, now, honestly, I haven't shot it on 308 yet. Not that I've been scared to, uh, but I did want a natural reaction for when I did do this test. So we're gonna see how this does. This is a 16 inch barrel, or actually, no, this is a 20 inch barrel in this 308. So we've got a lot of power to burn, a lot of dwell time. It's gonna perform decent, but if you see me squint really hard, you'll know why. And we connected at 270, that's pretty cool. And honestly, that sounded pretty good. Let's do it again.
Connected back at 270 again, freestanding, not too bad. And again, my hairs are feeling pretty good. So let's go on to some actual ARs and see how it performs with 76239. Let's go. All right, guys, so we have gone ahead and put the YHM R9 on the 76239AR. This is the KS47 Gen 2 from Palmetto State Armory, AKA Poverty State Armory. But you know, say what you will, they are arming more Americans than the US government at schools. You know, take that for what you will. Ah, all right, so we got our AK mag, which is the beautiful thing about this. It doesn't use those AR mags. It does use actual AK mags. No bolts hold open. We've got a few in here. We're not gonna try and hit anything because this is not zeroed. Ah, and I already know this is pretty loud, so bear with me, let's see how we go. Okay, that last one started ringing in the ear a little bit. If this is your only suppressor and you have a X39 platform that you wanna run it on, as long as your barrel is concentric, I think you're gonna be okay. Two, three rounds in a house, in a self-defense situation, yeah, I think you're not gonna to be too dazzled by the hearing. But if you're planning to do this at a range day, if you want it to be without ear pro like I am right now, I would not advise using just something like this for more than two or three shots to show your friends, then put your ear pro back on. Just keep yourself safe. It works, but I would not call it hearing safe. All right, All right guys, so we are with our 223556 build now. Again, this is the AB Raptor six stack with a six inch reflex. Really big reflex cam, but I love the way it looks on this gun. But I also more importantly love the way it sounds. Now, I don't consider this 100% hearing safe for a full day at the range, but I do consider it hearing safe enough that if I'm doing full auto even, this can does an admirable job. So we're gonna start by, oh, there we go, by oiling a gun next time. But we're gonna start by going ahead and showing you what this sounds like, just so you know what good is, and then we'll go from there. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and change out cans. All right guys, so YHM R9, kinda looks like a turbo T2 if you ask me. Now I do have a T2, it's pin and welded onto a 10 and a half inch AR. It's my YHM Integral, you should check out that video in my feed. Uh, but this, it's gonna sound a little bit worse, right? So we're overboard for 223, 20, 22 caliber is what 223 roughly is, 0.223 caliber. And this is bored for nine millimeters, so it's quite a big difference. Now, what that translates to is more gas escaping. More gas escaping means less gas getting interrupted and more explosion sound back to your ear. So, without any further ado, uh, let's see how it sounds. That's actually not bad. So, when I shot this the first time with 223, it was with the Steyr AUG, or the Steyr AUG. And with that, you have a piston system, and that piston in the very front is actually responsible for a lot of the gas escape. And when that happens, you get the piston pop. Piston pop hurts your ears. This doesn't have that. There's my impact spine. All right, we got a couple more, but we don't want to warm this up too much because now we're going on to our last one, which is SBR 300 Blackout. Back to the comparison of cans. Remember I talked to you about Form 1 cans uh, that I manufactured, I made myself. This one, it was purpose built for subsonic 300 blackouts. So I wanna give you an example of what it sounds like on this SBR. This is a registered SBR, don't worry about that. Uh, but it is an eight inch barrel, which is at the threshold of what they're gonna allow you to use with the YHM R9. So we're gonna do some subsonic ammunition first. Then I'm gonna swap over to some supers that I have in my belt. Whew, when this comes back off. You know, likey. Eh, there it goes. All right, so we'll swap over to some supers that are in my belt and we'll do three, clear, and then we'll do three. So let's see how it sounds. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this can is just stupid impressive. Literally all I hear is the action of the bolt going back and forth. Such a fun gun. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do supers. Again, not as quiet. So let's see how it sounds. Like I said, the can was designed around supers, right? That's pretty loud. 
Yep, that's enough of that one. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to the R9, see how it does. Oh, we've now switched over to the YHM R9, can still a little bit warm. We are still using our Griffin Plan A XL, which is gonna give us the QD attachment that I have on this rifle. It's just kind of how I've designed it. First off, we're starting with subs. I expect it's gonna perform pretty admirably. Let's take a listen. Okay, that first one, you get a little bit of oxygen burn off. Let's try again. Is it as quiet? No, but is it really quiet? Yeah. All right, guys, we have switched on over to our supersonic 110 grain AAC ammunition. It's a little bit louder, but again, I actually think it performs slightly better than our Form 1 can, which if I mistakenly said it's designed around supers, it was designed around subsonics. Let's see how it sounds. I don't know. It's not very comfortable. This is a short barreled eight inch, but the can is rated for it. Would I use it at home defense? If I was gonna shoot a couple rounds, would I use it for hunting? Absolutely, if I'm gonna do one or two shots, it's not gonna bother me too bad. Again, know your limitations, guys. Don't put on a suppressor and expect to be able to go to the range and just mag dump all day long without coming home with the ringing ears, tinnitus, and terrible damage done. Be smart about it. Even though you're using a suppressor, you may need to use ear pro in cases of supersonic ammunition like this 300 blackout, in cases of like the 223-556, and even in the case of the X39. But if you're doing subsonic ammunition, 300 blackout, subsonic ammunition on the bolt gun, even supersonic on the 308, to be honest, in that 20 inch configuration, I think you're gonna be pretty happy with how the YHM R9 performs. So would I recommend this can to anybody? The answer is kind of yes. If it's your first can and you're one of those folks that come to me saying, what should I start out with? If your arsenal includes a pistol in nine millimeter, if you have a 308 rifle, or if you wanna get into 300 blackout later, maybe you've got a 16 inch AR that you've had for years and you wanna to come to try and suppress it at some point. This one can can cover that entire arsenal of weapons without much effort. But again, let me caveat, you're getting into a cheap ecosystem when you buy the tax, buy the can, all in right under 600 bucks if you wait for a good sale from Silencer Shop. However, when we add on the tri-lug mount, when we add on a QD system, when we start adding muddle devi muddle muzzle devices onto it, you're gonna start getting into that $1,000 range pretty quickly. So does it make sense over some of the hybrid options out there? I'm gonna go ahead and still say yes, because where it performs admirably in nine millimeter with subsonic ammunition, I think that alone justifies it as a great purchase for yourself. Where it performs with 300 subsonic ammunition, I think that validates it as a purchase, even if you're running an SBR and just wanna throw subs through it. Maybe you're gonna start getting into the NFA game and go to machine guns later. You're gonna go ahead and be rated for full auto. So guys, check them out, Yankee Hill Machine Company, the YHM R9, and yeah, it is pretty stinking hot right now. But till then, ask questions and we'll answer them later. Thanks guys.